PlanetScale just released our very first workflow, which allows you to move uncharted tables to a sharded key space. Now the underlying technology that makes this possible is called Vitesse. With Vitesse, you can run hundreds and hundreds of MySQL instances, but to your application, it only appears as a single instance. PlanetScale's new move tables workflow provides an incredibly easy way to shard these tables. But the reality is, despite how powerful Vitesse and PlanetScale are, it's not exactly as simple as clicking a couple buttons and having a great performance sharded database. You need to do some upfront design work to design a performant sharding scheme that avoids cross shard queries. In this video, I am going to cover exactly how to do that. So this is meant to be a beginner's video to understanding some of these concepts. Now there's a lot that goes into this, more than I can cover in just this video alone, but my goal here is to provide you with a basic understanding of kind of the mindset you should be in when you start to design your sharded database. So to start, you first need to understand what a key space is. A key space is essentially a logical database. So it's sort of a container around your clusters. Right here, you can see an example of a single uncharted key space. If you already have a planet scale database and you have never sharded it, you probably have this single key space that you he see here. So it'll just be usually a single primary and by default to replicas, you also have the option to add more. But this here is the most basic setup. If we wanna shard some of our tables though, we have to add a new key space. So as you can see here, this one has our original uncharted key space. And then over here, we've added a second key space. So over here, within this sharded key space, we have two shards. And within each shard, there's that default primary and two replicas. Again, you can add as many replicas as you want in each of these shards. And likewise, you can add as many shards as you want in the sharded key space. Just to show you an example of how large these sharded key spaces can get, here's an example with eight shards here. There are loads of companies out there running gigantic Vitesse clusters. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of shards within a key space. So you can really do a lot with this setup. All right, let's review the schema of this metal database. So this database powers a gym tracker application. So the main tables we wanna look at here are the exercises table. This is a fairly static table, which let's say the application owners maintain. So maybe it has about 200 rows in it of different exercises. Down here, we have a programs table, also very small, let's say about 20 entries. Again, the application owner maintains this, so users cannot write to this table. And then down here, we have this users table, typical users table, has an email, ID, name, all of that. And then up here, we have this exercise logs table. So this table is the one that's been causing us problems. Every time a user logs a new workout, they're logging multiple exercise logs every single workout. So they might do a set of squats, a set of deadlifts, set of barbell curls, whatever they happen to do, each one of those is gonna be its own exercise logs entry. So as you can imagine, this exercise logs table grows much, much faster than all of the other ones. So once you hit a point in your database where things are noticeably slowing down, or maybe this table has grown into several hundred gigs or terabytes even, you might start thinking about horizontally sharding this table. And that's what we're gonna do here. So what that means is we need to move this exercise logs table to the sharded key space. So this diagram here shows this is our original uncharted key space. So we had the users table, exercises, and programs there. And since we decided to shard this table, we're gonna move exercise logs over to the sharded key space. Now, one of the big things you need to think about when you're designing a sharding scheme is how you can avoid cross shard or cross key space queries for your most common query patterns. So just looking at this alone, if we ever have to do any query that joins the users table or exercises table with exercise logs, we're gonna have problems. We're already jumping across key spaces and then possibly jumping across shards as well. So we may need to solve that. We only need to worry about that if that is a common query pattern for our application to join those tables. Now, looking back at the schema, you can see there are references here to both user ID and exercise ID. And for the sake of this example, let's just pretend that is a common query pattern. Maybe it's our most common query pattern. 
every time a user logs in, they want to browse their previous workouts they've done. And to do that, we're pulling the user data, the exercise data, and joining it with the exercise logs table. So again, with this setup, we're going to have some cross key space queries in that scenario. Let's see if we can design a setup that allows us to completely avoid those for this query pattern. Again, it's almost impossible to design a sharding scheme that avoids all cross shard queries, uh, but your goal here is to avoid it for the most common queries. So first things first, we can actually just decide that we're going to move the users table and the exercises table to this sharded key space as well. The programs table, again, that's fairly static and probably doesn't get used too often. So we can just leave that one in the uncharted key space. Now, the next problem here is actually avoiding cross shard queries. So we have all these tables in the same key space, but that doesn't guarantee every time we try to access, let's say user ID one's exercise logs, that all of their exercise logs are going to be on the same shard. So that poses the next question. How do we tell Vitesse which data belongs on which shard? We do this with what we call vindexes. In Vitesse, a vindex is used to map each row of data to a particular shard. And just like in MySQL, how every table must have a primary key, in Vitesse, every sharded table has to have a primary vindex. So the primary vindex is a column in your sharded table that maps to a particular shard or key space ID. Now the value of this primary vindex depends on two things. One, it depends on the column that you're choosing to shard on and two, the type of vindex you choose. If this feels confusing, please just hold tight while I show you an example. All right, so taking a look at the Vitesse docs here, you can see there's a number of predefined vindexes. For the scope of this video, we're actually just gonna choose a good old hash. So I'm gonna pick the XX hash down here. All right, so to recap so far, we have chosen which tables we wanna shard. We've then looked at which other tables are commonly joined with that table and chosen to move all of those to the same key space. We've also chosen the type of vindexes we wanna use for those tables. And finally, we need to choose the column that we want to use as the shard key for all of those tables. And this is gonna be the column whose value we pass through this XX hash function. So now if we come back here to our planet scale database and we select all the rows in our exercise logs table, you can see here, we basically need to choose one of these columns to run through that XX hash function, which allows us to come up with the Vindex. So a common choice, which usually is a good first shot to try things out, is sharding on this primary key here, so ID. So let's see what it looks like if we do that. So for every row, we're going to run this ID through the XX hash function. So then to see which shard it actually ends up on, we're gonna convert that hex output from the hash function to an eight byte unsigned integer. And that output will fall within a certain range. Each range is mapped to a different shard. So I went ahead and did that exercise for us. And this is what we got. So. This is that exercise logs table. This, you wanna actually store all this in the table, of course, this is just to demonstrate what it looks like, but we ran ID of one through the XX hash function. The output we got was this value here, and then we convert that output into the unsigned int that you're seeing here. And then this value falls in the range that designates it to go onto shard two. This is a little bit of an oversimplification, um, but, this is essentially how the process works. You don't have to do any of this stuff yourself. I am just explaining this so you understand kind of what's happening behind the scenes. So what we're trying to accomplish here is one, even distribution across the shards and two, avoiding cross shard queries for this common query pattern we're looking at. Looking at this, obviously this is a very tiny sample. You would likely have millions and millions of rows if you're at the point of sharding a table. Uh, but pretty even distribution so far in our four row sample size. Um, but we have a problem. So if we take a look here, this is that same exercise logs table, but I'm throwing these two columns back in. So the user ID column and the exercise ID column. 
if you take a look at what's happening with the user ID here, so we have this user whose ID is one, and let's say these three exercise logs are for an exercise they did today. Take a look at what shard each of these logs is on. So this first log is on shard two for this user, but the second log and third logs are on shard one. So if we ran that query where we grab all exercise logs for this user, we're already gonna have to do a cross shard query to grab these three logs here. So this again was us sharding on this primary key for exercise logs. Doing this little exercise here, we can see that this isn't gonna work. We need a different solution. So we go back to the drawing board. A better solution here might actually be to shard on the user ID. When you run a certain ID through a hash function, the same ID that you're running through will always hash to the same value. So that's kind of a good indicator that this might be a good choice for us. And if you take a closer look, so we're running user ID through the hash function here. This is the hash output, and then we convert it to the unsigned int. And then from there, we come up with the shard that it ends up falling on. So as you can see here, the user with ID one, the hash output for that user's ID is always gonna be the same value, and thus will always convert to the same unsigned int and thus will always end up on the same shard. So this is already much, much better. I think this solution is gonna work for this exercise logs table. So bam, we have the correct Vindex we wanna use for exercise logs, but we still have another problem. You might've anticipated this, but what about the exercises table? How does that come into play here? Again, this is the same setup where we're sharding on the user ID. So it already works out that user with ID one is all on the same shard, but let's take a look at this. So the exercise with an ID of two is over here on shard two. We have another entry, exercise ID two, but that one's on shard one. So when we join these tables, sure, all of the user's exercises are on the same shard, but we're still gonna have to do a cross shard query to grab the exercises if we're joining that table as well. And this is where it gets a little tricky. So there's really no straightforward way to choose a Vindex for this table that ensures all user workouts are on the same shard and all exercises are on the same shard as well. It just kind of logically doesn't make sense unless every row for all three tables is on the same shard, which then what's the point of sharding at all? You're back to a single instance. The alternative here, Vitesse has something called reference tables that essentially allow you to make a copy of a table across every single shard. The downside to this method is of course, because this data is copied to every single shard, anytime an update comes into that data, it has to be updated on every single shard as well. So if you're in a situation where you have hundreds of shards, that means you're hitting every single one of those shards to update the data for that table. So just think carefully about this uh, with regards to your own application to see if this is the right solution for you. As it turns out, the exercise table is actually a great candidate for this solution in our application. It's fairly static since only the application owner is allowed to add new exercises and on top of that, it's pretty small as well. So if we follow this solution of using a reference table to copy this exercises table to every single shard, that solves our problem of having to go cross shard to get the exercise data. So this seems like a pretty good setup, right? Let's recap what we've done so far. So we've chosen to initially shard our exercise logs table but then we realized we frequently do joins with both the users table and exercises table. So we moved all three of those to the sharded key space. Next, we had to choose the Vindex for this exercise logs table. We wanted one that avoids cross shard queries between the exercises table, users table, and this exercise logs table. So we chose to shard on the user ID, which accomplishes that. And then we also chose to use a reference table to make a copy of this exercises table on every single shard. All right, all good so far, but what about that users table? We know it needs to live in the middle sharded key space, but how do its rows get distributed across the shards? 
So the great thing about charting on the user ID for the exercise logs table is it actually enables us to use the same sharding key for this users table. So if you take a look here, this is our users table. We have the user ID here. Let's run it through that same exercise where we hash on the ID and see what shards each of these rows end up on. All right, so this is what we're working with here. User with the ID of one has their user data on shard two. The user with user ID of two has their data on shard one and so forth. So now if we look at both of these tables next to each other, so we have the users table and the exercise logs table. Let's zone in on the user data for our user with ID one. So as you can see, the output for running this user ID through the hash function is the same as the output for when we ran this user ID through the hash function as expected because the same ID should always output to the same value. So taking a look here, let's say we are trying to grab all of the exercise logs from today, join them to our user for our user with ID one, and then we wanna join those logs with the user data. So maybe we wanna go and grab their name, their email, whatever. We just need to join this exercise logs table and the users table. So if we do that for user with ID one, we end up with all these rows in purple here, and then we end up with this other purple one up here. And as you can see, all of those are on shard two. And to show it's not just a fluke, even though this is a very small sample size, if we look at the user with ID two, and then we look up here at their user data for user ID two, they're on shard one here, and then down here on shard one as well. And then remember the exercises table exists on both shards. So we have that covered here for any exercise ID that comes up as well. This is about as good as we're gonna get. And to recap one more time, what we've chosen is to shard our exercise logs table. So we move that to the sharded key space. We identify that we frequently join that exercise logs table with the users table and exercises table. So we're gonna take both of those tables and move them to the sharded key space as well. We've chosen to use the XX hash functional vindex for exercise logs, and we're gonna shard that on the user ID. We're gonna use a reference table to make a copy of the exercises table on every single shard. And finally, we're gonna use the XX hash functional vindex for the users table, and we're gonna shard that on the ID. And now the hard work is done. If you wanna put all this into action and shard some of your tables, go ahead and watch the next video. I'll link it up here somewhere, whichever side it ends up on, and in the description below. The next video shows you how to actually shard your tables on planet scale. Our sharding functionality is now available on all plans. You don't need an enterprise plan anymore. So please feel free to go sign up, check that out. And if you have any questions, we have a Discord channel that you can join, ask anything in there, or of course, feel free to write into our support team and they can help you out. Thanks again. See you in the next one. Bye.